Ribrianne is no more, guys. That's what I'm thankful for. And I know it's not Thanksgiving anymore, but it was a long time coming. It was overdue, right? They ended up hiding from Vegeta. Vegeta should have taken them out. But Android 17 and 18 went in this week, getting the job done. You've got Android 17 setting up this barrier. You've got Android 18 literally darting through her head, creating a big giant hole. And, you know, honestly, guys, I was not looking forward to this episode, just on knowing that Ribrian was going to be the center focus. We got to quickly address Ribrian's power because she was coming from a place of defeat. She ends up binding Android 18 in this love energy. She ends up expanding. I mean, she got a big major boost as everybody in her camp was holding up these love rods or whatever. And if you want to be legit, she could have probably taken out both of the androids with the kind of power boost they gave her. It is a little bit sloppy right now, and I'm just going to be very honest with you guys because here's the thing, all right? Ribrianne was coming from a place to defeat herself. I mean, she is partially responsible for Rosie's defeat. They were so irresponsible, they ended up attacking each other half the time. Android 17, 18 were running circles around them. So Ribrianne on the ropes gets his major power up. You've got the God of Destruction in her universe giving her a boost, right? As well as everybody else in the camp. She throws a punch. You got Android 18 on the ropes. But Android 18 is inspired by Krillin, ends up countering her and, you know, creating a big giant hole uh, through her head and taking her out. I mean, I don't really know what to do with that. It was beautifully animated. I mean, the scene was absolutely gorgeous. And I'm glad that Android 17 and 18 got some time to shine. In fact, this is a feat, right? Taking out Universe 2's strongest. But it's also like, we went from, okay, Ribrianne, Rosie, they're going in, and maybe they're on top, and then Android 17 and 18, and then they're on top, and it's like, it's 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 not consistent. So, when Ribrianne's getting defeated, given this major boost, it feels like it was just a, a circus. Like, this, this wasn't actually anything important. So, this episode kind of, it undermined the episode when the writing's not consistent. So, I just wanted to say, I'm glad that Ribrianne's gone, I'm glad she's defeated, but if anybody actually wants to support this from like a quality standpoint, like seeing Ribrianne go in and man, Android 17 and 18 work together, it was a beautiful mess. Nonetheless, it was a mess. I will admit there were some pretty funny moments in the fight, like Ribrianne being exposed to Krillid's bald head, and she connects that to Android 18. She's like, is this your man right here? And Android 18's like, what of it? So that triggers her. Like, that's what makes her go off because she's all about love. That's her ideology. We need to stand up for love across all the universes. But she put Android 18 in this box of evil because her ending up with Krillin is an insult to the concept of love. Yes, you heard that right. So I just thought it was hilarious how Ribrianne was just like shitting all over Android 18's relationship. Like, like I can't believe you, you're scum. Like you're absolute scum. You ended up with, with that baldy, that short baldy over there. You might as well have ended up with Saitama from One Punch Man. At least he ain't on Yamcha level. And then there was also the Omni Kings and the Zenos play fighting. And we haven't seen them play fight like this ever. Never. Not once in the Tournament of Power, not once before. Not during the exhibition match, never, right? So out of all the fights that they could have been inspired by to play fight, it was Vegeta versus Rosie. That was the fight that inspired the Omni Kings to start throwing hands with each other. And even though this is the world of Void, that could have, you know, man, listen, that could have led to some deadly consequences right there. So yeah, these Universe 2 Warriors are trash. They're a joke. And honestly, what we're going to see is our Budo going in next week, as well as some others from Universe 2. I have a feeling that they are going to go bye-bye. We are not going to have Universe 2 around anymore. And that's what they get for putting Ribrianne as their front man. Even her ideology is a joke. What about Ribrianne screams love, aside from actual hearts? Literal, physical manifestations of hearts. What's in her ideology that's, that's lovely? Okay? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And the joke got played out. Now, we've got to talk about Vegeta this week. Our boy Vegeta and specifically what he tried to do. So, he wants that Ultra Instinct and he even attempted to go Ultra Instinct this week. Or at the very least, get in that state of mind because we know about the flashback that happened last week where he remembers exactly what we said. That he overthinks and that's one of his biggest problems, right? And of course he saw Goku go Ultra Instinct. He saw him like beating himself up, constantly making himself suffer against Kefla. So why don't I try to do the same against Katopesla? And already that's like a formula for failure right there because 
Cattle Pesa, like, listen, guys, you might not like Kefla. You might be happy Kefla's gone, like Ribrian this week. But we're not watching the Power Rangers, guys. So Vegeta ends up having enough of all of Cattle Pesla's punches, and he's like, you know what? I just can't take this anymore. He starts going at Cattle Pesla. And this entire situation, man, I'm actually quite relieved because when the spoilers came out about Vegeta trying to attain Ultra Instinct and failing, I thought in the back of my head, like, no, Vegeta's gonna be actually, like, really serious, really nervous, like, trying to get down to the business, trying to get that Ultra Instinct, like, for real. But this week, man, it really wasn't like that. It was mostly, like, Vegeta, to some degree, just testing the waters, okay? Let me start taking some hits. Granted, it was a little bit dumb because it was Takato Pesla, but still, I get what they were trying to do with this, and this is just the start. Keep in mind, guys, I think Vegeta is going to get Ultra Instinct. It's going to take some time, but at least we're getting the ball rolling. And if anything, it shows us there's going to be no shortcuts for Ultra Instinct, because imagine he actually awakened it to Kato Pesla. I mean, how many of us would rage? Just think about it. You know, Goku, he got Ultra Instinct by accident, and then he felt it. His body naturally adapted. They explained this in Battle of Gods, so he was able to understand the process and try to reach that state again, fighting against Kefla, an actual legitimate enemy. Think about her what you want. Vegeta, you think that he's going to get to the same state of mind by just closing his eyes for 10 seconds? That's funny. So I owe you guys an apology for misconstruing the spoilers. They did not make Vegeta look like a joke this week. And if anything, man, Vegeta's going to get his own version of the Ultra Instinct. And I'm going to make a video about this another time, but just goes to show you that if Vegeta overthinks his version of this technique is going to be just a little different. So yeah, I don't really have that much else to say about this episode. Pretty average one this week. We've got Goku exhausted from all the fights. Jiren, Keifla, I'm surprised he's still standing and conscious. And he's being just bullied around and chased around. But thankfully, we've got teammates to come to his defense. And I doubt he's going to have any serious fighting action until someone that is on his level confronts him and he actually recovers a bit more. We also get a teeny bit of Gohan Piccolo action fighting the Universe 6 Namekians. Seemingly, that's what next week's center focus is on. 